Hello there, welcome to Mind Your Business. I am Amma Duncan, founder of the Fabulous Woman Network. Mind Your Business is our weekly podcast which allows us to talk about business and leadership and things that will help us grow so that we can create wealth and impact people. I bring you greetings from our sake room. This week on Mind Your Business, I am interviewing a very fabulous young woman. She's she she calls herself young, so I can also add that she's young. And I've had the privilege of knowing her for about six or so years. She's amazing. And today we get to hear a bit of her story. Her name is Mrs. Faith Fatima Osei Mensa. It's actually Fatima too. Faith Fatima too. Osei Mensa. I call her Faith. She is the managing director and business owner at Terfa Possibility, Fabex Designs, and Farm Global Cleaning and Rental Services. I am going to enjoy this conversation with her because I've known her in a, you know, for some time and I've seen how she's just moving from strength to strength in her business. And I pray and hope that this interview will be of value to you as well. Sit tight and enjoy. Okay, thank you for having me on your platform. A pleasure. It's, it's a dream come true. Ah, to <laughs> God be the glory. Amen. Um, my name is Faith Fatima. Osei Mensa, and um, I am an entrepreneur and uh, a graduate from Regional Maritime University. I am just 30 years old. Just? <laughs> hey, it's not just so. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and I'm currently running um, Tefa Possibility and Fan Global. Well, and then Fabex design. With Fabex design, I'm I'm more or less like an investor, or an associate kind of. But with Tefa and then Fan Global, I'm the sole proprietor for those two businesses. Mm. Wow, so that's that's what I do for now. That's impressive that you have two, well, three businesses because the third one, you are an investor as well. That's amazing. I mean, I, I am saying it's amazing because I know a bit about you. How did uh, a girl, a regular Ghanaian girl like myself, who didn't come from a lot of money, ended up having three businesses? What's the journey about you becoming a businesswoman? It all started in 2017. Mm. I, I had a call from Amadanka. <laughs> she said, Faith, I have a friend who supplies diapers. I I think you can you can be able to sell this. So take her number and call her. Mm. I said, okay. And she didn't even think whether I had money or not. <laughs> no, before then, before then, remember, before <laughs> then, we knew each other already. So maybe you should, yeah. you should let the people know perhaps how we met first. Yes, yes. So they, they I, I met Amma uh, at Fabulous Woman Speak, I think in 2016. Yes, yes. That was where I met Amma. Yes. And there were a lot of people. I don't know how I managed to get her number. <laughs> And she managed to put me on, I think, two other two programs of hers, which had yeah. been a blessing. Mm. Yes. Free. I didn't pay. <laughs> that was favor. You know, I don't have money. Was she, I was just favor. <laughs> <laughs> so when she gave me the contact, I called the person. I picked up a few booths, sold them out. And that was how I started. I was working then. Then I realized, okay, I can do something out of this business. So let me resign. I resigned from my job knowing I, I didn't even know where I was going to feed from. But I just had faith that this small business I'm starting can help me. So that's how it began. And then from just two parts, then it increased, increased. 
And I, along the line, I met my husband. And I spoke to him about my business. I said, see, this is the business I want to do. But I don't have money. And I, don't, I know a lot of young men don't trust women nowadays. So just have the faith. And I said, okay. He gave me money to get a shop in there. With small money, I, I think uh, we had, I was having like, after getting the shop, he gave me like um, 2,000 or so, so I could get a lot of stuff. And then I started with diaper, um, tea roll, and soap in the shop. That's how I started. And I, I added uh, mobile money to it. And then alongside, I got a contact and I started doing transfers to uh, Nigeria. So that's how it began for me. And gradually, the shop grew from just 10 to more and more and more. And we start, I started adding cosmetic stuff to it, perfumes, creams, whatever. And now I'm have, uh, we've added gift items. We've added a lot of products to it. So that's, that's the journey so far. It hasn't been easy. It wasn't easy, but God has been faithful. I always say that God has been faithful. I, whenever I'm, I'm sharing my story, I always say it is God. It's the God factor because it's not easy starting a business with no mentor, nothing. And then you've come this far. It's, it's, just, it's just by God's grace. It's just by God's grace. It is, it's indeed by God's grace. I mean... You've really done well for yourself. Looking back at 2017 and within, I think so it's what, five years now, you've expanded. You started from a couple of diapers and you've expanded it. So how many shops do you have for Tefa possibilities? For Tefa, we have two. Mm-hmm. It used to be three. I closed down the third shop. Yeah, two shops for Tefa. It, it's it's really inspiring to think that you didn't start with a lot in the beginning, but gradually, gradually, you had God brought the right people to help you to expand. And now you are also employing other people, right? Yes. How many people have you employed? I've employed um, three, four, four people. Wow. We used wow. to be um, seven. Mm. but they have been laid off. Okay. So we are four. Aside that too, I've been able to raise young ladies who are doing so well for themselves. Mm. Because I remember very well, Madame Khan told me, said, if you get better, don't let it stay there. Get somebody and mentor. So mm. I'm I'm doing that. The Fabex actually is a young lady who had finish um, uh, training in sewing mm. and she has no money so I just I'm just mentoring her mm. so that she can get somewhere there's an, another lady to have uh, mentored she's also having a, a, a wine shop now she started small and she's also doing so well I'm, I'm so 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 happy like I've been able to mentor others others and and imagine yeah. that they will also mentor others and mentor keep yeah, going yeah. And, going. That, and that's exactly how it should be we all get help from other people and, and then we also expect her to help other people that's that's so beautiful thank you thank you for sharing and giving me goosebumps <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. That's really beautiful and inspiring because somebody could be listening to this somewhere thinking, oh, I don't have much. And like you said, at the time I called you, you didn't even have money, but somehow exactly. you, you made it work, you know. And I remember, I think we even fought because <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't go right away or something. I wasn't happy at all. Uh, so why did you two go for the things like oh, <laughs> oh yeah I'm, I'm so grateful like for pushing me in a way i'm so grateful yeah you know when you use that word push i've, I've been accused of being too pushy sometimes but <laughs> sure. God, at least some sometimes the pushing gets somewhere you know? yes exactly <laughs> wow wow to god be the glory 
Now, as you were speaking, you mentioned that um, there, there's been a few challenges. As I mean, of course, you're a young Ghanaian woman and you have a very full life at home and all that. You Now you have a ministry where you're helping young girls as well. You're trying to manage your own three businesses and all. So when you say challenges, for someone listening who is inspired and or is also considering, you know what, I also want to start something small. What one major challenge can you share with this person that's beware of this or I face this challenge and this is how I managed it? And so you you can, I know you can also do it. Sure. Um, in the beginning was money, but along the line, it's got better. Um, the other thing I, 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 the other thing that was a bit challenging for me was uh, the human resource I had. I had few of them that were trustworthy, but along the line, there was just, our finances was just getting messy. And I didn't know what to do. And I had nobody to speak to. But I was trying to use my own wisdom and then see how I could manage it. I said, see, you know what? Let me lay off these people because they coming on board. We started experiencing all these things when they came on board. So let me just put them off. I'm, I'm a very emotional person. I'm um, somebody when I employ, I think about, I don't just think about uh, me paying you. I go beyond just paying you to build a relationship with you. I see you like a family. So I I, I was thinking like, hey, if you let this person off, what would they feed knowing their story and all that? But I had to because the business, the, the finance of the business is not it's coming down. Mm-hmm. And if I joke, like everything I've labored for would just come down. So mm-hmm. I, I just had to let mm-hmm. them go. Mm-hmm. So that was a challenge for me, like mm-hmm. letting somebody go because yeah. Yeah. they don't have anything to eat. Mm-hmm. And you have to let them go. It's yeah. very tough. Yeah. Very, very tough. Yeah. So because I, I, of that, I find it difficult employing people. Like, mm-hmm. But with my business, I know that by now I should have like at least 10 or more. Mm. But I'm too emotional. Mm. And so it's, it's very challenging for me. I'm so emotional mm. when it comes to human beings and, and mm. them. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can imagine. I can imagine how hard it can be. When you care about people, you want to make sure they are okay, but at the same time, they are doing something wrong and you have to let them go. And I think as leaders, these are some of the tough decisions sometimes you have to sure. make. And ah, God be with us. <laughs> God be with us as we make it. You mentioned that two key tools that are important for you as a businesswoman are transparency and honesty. Tell us about this. Um, I, when I started my business, I met with my transfer business. I met a total stranger that I don't know from anywhere. But the person gave me the opportunity to use his platform to do my business. So the only tool I had was to make sure that I was so open to him. And then very truthful because it it was in, it it involved money. Mm. Because um, where he was and where I, I was was too it's a long distance. I cannot be traveling to his side all the time to give his money to him. Mm. But one thing that I had to learn to do was to do was make sure that. If it is one CD I have to give him, I have to make sure the one CD goes. Whatever calculations I have to do for him, I have to make sure that it is accurate. Because sometimes he doesn't look at his calculations. Sometimes he can leave money with me days and then 
You know, money is very tempting. Mm. Like, okay, this person is not ready to take the money. Let me just take this, this and use before he comes. But I made sure I, 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 I never touched his money. Mm-hmm. That is not mine. And it says I gave it to him. And with my customers, to today I have customers that leave their money with me. Like, okay, keep this money for me. I'm not using it now. And the way they gave me the money, that's the same way they come back and then the money is... is so I, I, I was able to build trust with my customers. And they find it very difficult going to other places because they know that, okay, with faith, my money is safe. Everything is safe for me. Mm. Get it? Mm. If, if a transaction doesn't go through, I have to... I make sure that I quickly inform them, this is what has happened. So don't panic, don't be afraid, be patient, it will be done for you. Because mm. money issues, if you are not careful, to create a lot of problems. Mm. So that was that was what helped my business a lot. Like being very honest. If I don't have what they want me to do, if I don't have, I tell them, okay, you know what? Um, your transaction will be delayed because I don't have the amount you want me to send at the moment. I don't collect the money and be lying. Oh, I've sent it, I've sent it. You know, there are people who do that. Meanwhile, the transaction has not been done. Mm, mm. I made sure they, they know what is going on. Okay, this is what is going on. Sometimes people say it's not good for business, but that really helped me build mm. um, a, 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 a customer relation with my, my people. Mm. Especially with Nigerians, they have a lot of... Sorry, my Nigerian people. <laughs> they, they have um, trust issues. Mm. But once you are able to break that barrier, trust me, you're good to go with them. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so. well done. Great job. And I remember I actually used your services. Remember during the pandemic to yes. send some money to Nigeria? And yeah, you were, I remember the the decimals, when you say this is the amount they will receive, the people will come and tell me this is the exact amount with exactly. dot, dot eight five or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think that that's really true about what you're saying. Well done. Now, you know, that a lot of women in our network are leaders like yourself, also running businesses and all. Based on your story, what lesson can you share with us, you know, for someone, perhaps at the time, I think you had just finished na- national service when you started, right? Yes. So for a young woman yourself who also wants to start and is not sure, there's no money. Based on your own experience, what lesson, what can you tell this person? Okay. Um, based on my own journey, one major thing I'll tell everybody is um, whatever you want to do, Start it. Don't be afraid. It might go well, it might not go well, but no matter what it is, start it. Especially when it keeps ringing in your head. Whenever you sleep, you see it. Like, you have to do this. Start it. Just start it. When you start it, some way, somehow, the help comes. Mm. You see that things start coming like, getting in place. Okay, when I start A, B comes, C comes, D comes. Because once you start, that's where you get the idea of what to do next. Yeah. But when you don't start, you don't know what to do next. So mm-hmm. when you start, you know, okay, I've started this, well, I need to, it's like, okay, I've put oil on fire. What should go into the oil? It should be onion or tomatoes. Before you realize you've prepared your stew. Mm-hmm. But that's how business is like. Before you realize your business is going, so you put in all the ingredients. Before you, until you start, you can you wouldn't know what ingredient to put in. Mm. So that's the advice I'll give to any woman listening to us. All right, thank you so much for sharing that. Now, before I let you go, I have a few questions that I will ask. I will start the question and you complete it with what comes to mind, okay? With a short phrase. So the first one is, if I could advise my younger self in one short sentence, I would say... (laughs) If I would advise my younger self, wow. 
Um, life is beautiful. <laughs> Take every opportunity serious. Don't let any and don't let any opportunity slide by. Mm. Any opportunity given you, take it serious. Mm. If somebody comes to say, okay, so um pens, and you feel in your spirit that I have to sell pens, start it. Mm. Don't oh pens. Those pens could could bring you the money you're looking for. Mm. Fabulous. Thank you. The second one is I am fabulous because I am fabulous because I can do anything I set my eyes on and I set my heart to do. Mm. I can do them. Mm. Thank you. The final question. One book that has greatly helped me in business is one, sorry, I didn't get that. One book that has greatly helped me in business is Rich Dad Poor Dad. Oh, but Faith, stop it. <laughs> Do you know what, what just happened? You, I, I'm using the headset so you will hear it. When I asked that question, my husband said, Rich Dad Poor Dad, and you also said it. I <laughs> don't think. <laughs> this is so Rich cool. Dad Poor Dad. <laughs> Wow, you know uh, I love that book, right? Yes, you you actually made me get that book. Oh, all oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> and I got the other one. He had he has the investment something something. Yes, that yes. for that investment. So I yes. I got the two books, mm. and it really helped me. Oh, oh, that is so good to hear. Right. So I know that you've recently opened your new business. And that's something new and exciting in your business. Please tell us about it and how we can be part. Yes. Fun Global is the new baby on board. Mm. And as a grocery shop, Mm -hmm. we are looking at selling at a very low price. Mm. Things are a bit difficult. So we put just tiny, tiny, tiny profit margins Mm. so that everybody can buy. Mm. We are looking at going bigger and being able to supply homes with all their groceries. You stay in your house, and you get your groceries delivered to you in your home. Oh. So that you don't have to go to the market or drive through the traffic and then get your groceries. Mm. So now that's what we, we are doing with Farm Global. Wow. And so far we are getting orders. So we mm. want more orders. Mm. So where would people find you? So, I mean, for someone, and are you, you, so you are based in Accra. Is, are you piloting this in a small part of Accra or is this? Across Accra. From now on, across Accra. Okay. Okay. So how do people find you? Okay. You can find us on the Nungwabwadi Road. Mm-hmm. Farm Global is located at uh, Nungwabwadi mm-hmm. Road. And you can also find us on uh, Instagram. That's Farm Global Ventures. Mm. That's together, Farm Global Ventures. And you can also send us email on um, farmglobalghana at gmail.com. Okay, excellent. Or you can call us on 050-384-3633. Wow, well done, Faith. You've really lived your name, you know, Faith. <laughs> well done. For, you, you are Thank so inspiring. You. There's something you did. I can't say, tell everyone, but that gesture you did out of the blue, it was so inspiring for me. And uh, God bless you. God bless you for okay. showing into the mm-hmm. girls. And I know you will do more. You've been called to more mm-hmm. and God is helping you to do more. You know, very soon I'll say, oh, I know a lot of millionaires. Let's talk to Faith. <laughs> and give us $1 million for this project. Amen. You know? Amen. <laughs> Amen. And it is possible. And I do look forward to you joining Girls Trip. Thank you so much also for coming for this year's conference. It was nice to see you after so long. You're doing so well. God Thank bless you. you. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, Faith succeeded in giving me my signature goosebumps. I love her story. It's just a bit that she shared. She didn't share a lot of the painful parts. Um, I mean, of course, in the other joyous parts, but at least 
this gives us an idea that no matter where you are, you can start with something and that thing can grow to be a blessing for other people. I mean, look ahead now, investing in the lives of other young people. Imagine if we all do this, you, you are blessed and you bless others, you are blessed, you bless others. It will just have a ripple effect and everybody can receive their own blessings through other people. So anyway, I hope this interview was a blessing to you. I know that I have been blessed and listening to her, I've been recharged. You know, she's giving me more of it to do what I do and to keep, you know, supporting the growth of women leaders, women in business. I know that I am also growing through it. Other people are blessing me. And as I help other people, my own blessings also come. And I hope there's a message in there that you are going to run with as well. Until I come your way again, God willing, Tuesday at 12 noon GMT. It's Ta. Toodles from Amadanka. Bye. Yeah.